All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great guest for you today, but before we get into that introduction, let's get through some of the show notes. If you're not following me on Twitter, you can check me out at SideQuestFM. Check me out as well on Instagram, SideQuestFM. Follow me on Facebook, SideQuest Fitness. Put that up in the search bar, like the page there, follow everything, get all the shenanigans, updates on podcast posts, uh, updates on articles, updates like Taco Tuesday. I put out a brand new taco recipe every single week for you to enjoy, as well as Full Disclosure Friday, where I tell you something secret about myself uh, or some rambling that I thought in my mind and and felt I should disclose, Uh, and fun stuff throughout the week, updates on geek and nerd stuff, as well as fitness stuff. All right. As I said, I have a great guest for you today. Oh, I almost forgot. Follow me on Snapchat. SideQuest Fit. Check out all of the background uh, stuff in my life so you can find out all of that as well over on Snapchat. But now let's get into the business of the show. I have a great guest for you. He is a writer and a podcast host as well uh, over at DumbbellsAndDragons.com. Now, when I connected with Kenneth, I was like, dude, you have the coolest like logo for a podcast ever. It is literally a dragon holding a dumbbell doing a bicep curl. I mean, I thought mine was epic. I thought mine was cool, but that that is that is some epic shit. Uh, but we really nerd out in this episode. We talk a little about fitness, but there's a whole long discussion on Harry Potter. There's a whole huge discussion on uh, Batman versus Superman, uh, and we really delve into a lot of things. Uh, but he actually goes out to Comic Cons, so you can see him uh, you know, at local Comic Cons, uh, Comic Cons, uh, and he talks and chats with people there. Uh, but he's, he has a great podcast with a ton of amazing guests. Um, you know, people who do voiceover stuff, people who write comics, people who star uh, in TV shows, you know, that are comic and nerd based. So please head over to iTunes and check out Dumbbells and Dragons. But let's get into the episode. Let's hear from my boy, my good friend, Kenneth Rotter of Dumbbells and Dragons. Step up and you gotta get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you gotta check it and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests, you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fears. Got a low key bamf right here. You wanna meet them, there's no better way to greet them than to strike a boss pose. Take a look into the mirror. All right, guys, welcome to a brand new episode of PsyQuest Podcast. I have an amazing nerdy guest on today. He's also a podcast host, he's brand new to the format, and I, I wanted to get him on the show. We connected via Twitter, uh, we called each other on Skype, and we chatted for over an hour. Um, but you know he has an awesome podcast when the name of it is Dumbbells and Dragons. <laughs> and yes, his icon is a dragon doing bicep curls. It's epically awesome. <laughs> but if you want to listen to a podcast that comes from the world where fitness and nerdiness collide. Well, this is the one man who's chosen to share that adventure with everyone. Uh, I love it. It's awesome. It's in the same vein. Uh, He talks about nerd stuff. He talks about fitness stuff, but he actually goes a little step further than I went where I went just interviewing people in fitness or people that inspire me. He speaks to people at, uh, that he meets at comic cons. They're artists uh, they're actors, they're fitness people as well in some ways, but he reaches out to talk to, to more people than just the fitness crowd. So it's a combination of let's talk fitness, but let's geek out and talk some awesome nerd stuff. Uh, but it is one of the best podcasts that I've listened to that is new on the market. So if you aren't listening, head over to iTunes and check out Dumbbells and Dragons. But I want to welcome my guest on Kenneth Rotter, did I pronounce that correct? You did, you did. Rotter, one who rots. <laughs> I'm also really bad at uh, pronouncing last names. One of my coaches who comes on like every month, I finally, after 10 months, got his last name correct. <laughs> um, but uh, Dumbbells and Dragons, man, I, I love it. I love it. Right now you're wearing, I got to see the t-shirt. I see a unicorn that says, Unleash the Beast. Dude, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, uh, this is a... This is a unicorn muscle 
shirt. It is, uh, people can check it out at unicornmuscle.com. Not my business, not my company, but uh, just a company I, I like. And they've got funny, awesome, great shirts. That's 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 badass. I might have to uh, I might have to see if old Mark Fisher knows about that. Uh, if not, I'll have to send him a T-shirt because I think he would enjoy that. Um, so, man, how did you how did you get into this? What 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 spurred the podcast? Because you're about by the time this airs, you'll probably be fourteen episodes in. Now, uh, right now we just had episode thirteen go up. Uh, this, the, okay, by the, shit, <laughs> by the time this goes up, I think we'll be at more like episode 20, episode 13 just aired first weekend in June and we've actually done five special podcasts. Yeah. We normally release every Wednesday, uh, usually around 8 AM for West coast people's drive to work and it's just been a blast, but anytime we're doing like a movie review or we have we're at a comic con and we have special guests or anything like that, we usually try to put those up as soon as they're done recording. But I actually got into podcasting about two years ago, and I wanted to start podcasting with two of my buddies, and it was just it was a too many cook situation. We all had kind of a different vision of what we wanted to do, right, and. A little bit later, the two other guys were like, you know what? No, nothing's getting done. So we're going to take a step back, focus on other things. Kenny, you go ahead and run with this and do what you need to do. Right. So then, I know you've heard the saying, an object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest has a tendency to stay at rest. Right. So since nothing had gotten done, I just, I was blogging once a week, not really doing anything with it. And then out of nowhere, this past January, nearly two years later, I got an email from a guy who had met me at San Diego Comic-Con and he's like, Hey, be a guest on my podcast. And I was like, why not? Sounds, sounds fun. You seem like a nice guy. Apparently we met. Neither of us really remembered it. (laughs) Uh, And so I went on his podcast and then I just started asking him questions, what types of mics he used, who he hosted with, and that just kind of got my ball rolling again. And so then almost two years after I wanted to begin podcasting, I launched my first episode on March 23rd and kind of haven't looked back. Dude, that's that's it's taking that first step. That's that's always always scary. Um, but you've had experience with it, so that's I think did that sort of help you? Because I know for me, like I sort of in college, we didn't have a college radio station. My roommate and I decided, oh, we'll let's do this podcast thing because, like, you know, everyone's buying Apple computers now and has these, you know, uh, i iPods, so we can we can get that market and we'll be young and hip and people will listen. Um, so that sort of helped in at least like knowing what to do and how to operate it and how to, how to do it. Um, do you think that sort of helped you that you had a little experience doing it in the past? I lost you. Do do you think that that sort of helped you launch this, that like it made it less fearful? Yes. It got to a point where a, I had already recorded probably between 20 and 40 hours of content. And I still have a, what I call my war chest of like 20 episodes that I'm going to release if I ever need to take a vacation or can't find a guest for one week or something happens. And then I can just release one of those back episodes kind of like saying, hey, this is where I was when I first started doing this, even before the first episode posted. So I do think that that two years experience of just recording people and figuring out my voice Mm -hmm. definitely made me less fearful when the time came to actually post things. And also because I wanted to be a podcaster. The key to being a podcaster is to release podcasts. 
right. not sit at home and edit them and never let anybody hear them. And so it got to a point where I was just super frustrated. I just wanted to get stuff out there. So it was more so it was just that frustration level of I've wanted to do this for two years and haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. And had I done this two years ago, had I just started the ball rolling back then, I'd be over 100 episodes now. Instead, um, it episode 18. You know, you got to release one episode before you can get to 100. Right. So it was, a, it was definitely a slower process for me. And the one thing I try to encourage people to do is no matter what your goal is, no matter what you want to do, is start today. You know, the best time to start was a year ago. The next best time is today. And, I'll, and it's like, if you want to be a podcaster, release podcasts. If you want to be a filmmaker, you have a video camera in your pocket. Yeah. Go make film. Yeah. You have a podcast. You have a recording device in your pocket. I mean, that's, people ask me all the time, uh, hey man, what do I, what do I need? How do I start? And I'm like, pull your phone out. Like your first episode or two doesn't need to be the greatest quality in the world. Just get it done. Like get it done and then hustle your ass off at work to make a few extra bucks or you know, don't go out one weekend and buy a mic on, on, you know, Amazon, like, but get that first one out there, get those first couple out there and then just keep, keep going. Yeah. And I've, I've had a bunch of, since becoming a podcaster, I've met other podcasters mm -hmm. and everyone is kind of saying the same thing. It's don't listen to my first 10 episodes. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I always thought that was kind of funny, but you know, that's people start with their cell phones. They start with using iPhone headphones yeah. because it's got the mic in it. Yeah. And, and then if, you know, you're still into it a couple months later, you spend a few bucks here, you get a new, better mic, you get a better setup. You, I just bought a portable mic, like a really nice uh, portable microphone to record stuff when I'm out at comic cons. So I don't have to, un so I don't have to set up my entire laptop, regular mic, you know, right. Sound booth stuff. Yeah. Um, so I guess my, why, why combine, why combine dumbbells and dragons? I mean, it, you, you know, you, you have the comic con thing, you're going there, you're doing that. You could have created, just a, a another con podcast. You could have done that where you're talking to people as you go. So why combine fitness with the nerd aspect? First, those are two of my biggest passions. Um, I love being a nerd and I love going to the gym. I love working out. Uh, I've had some injuries as of late, but just going to the gym and leaving it all on the floor is one of the best feelings in the entire world. And I also think we are at a day and age where there are so many things that are not good for our health mm -hmm. that this is a way to help inspire people to make healthier decisions or live a healthier lifestyle. Uh, and I'm not saying thin. I don't want people to be thin. I want people to live healthy. Yeah. And there's a difference there. Yeah. And also one of the things is I've always said that we use nerd and fitness culture to break down barriers. And that's because historically, stereotypically, you've got nerds and jocks who have always been the butts of jokes. They've always been the sources of jokes. You know, you've got jocks picking on nerds shoving them in lockers, all this other stereotypical crap from movies and TV shows. And I just wanted to be like, no, more often than not, jocks and nerds are the same person. Yeah, You can be a jock and play Dungeons and Dragons. You can be a nerd and run 5Ks or run half marathons or Tough Mudders or be a gym rat. Yeah. 
I mean, look at look at basketball players. I mean, Tim Duncan, one of the greatest basketball players in NBA history. Though sadly, m- most people will never put them put him in their top five because he, I mean, he made he won a lot of championships, but he just he's not LeBron, he's not Michael, he wasn't flashy. He just he worked and he did it. But he's a huge D and D fan. Like he goes, he dresses up and goes to Renaissance fairs. Like he's a huge nerd. Um, oh, that's all. I see. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Um, the one guy I always went back to is Vin Diesel. Oh God. Vin Diesel is one of the big, like, dude, he's like, if he's not acting on camera, he's acting his D and D character. Like that's, there are stories from when he was on, I think it was Riddick. Yeah. That him and Dame Judi Dench would D and D in between takes. I wouldn't surprise me. And I just think that's like, there you go. Yeah. I, I like there, and I think once you sort of delve into it, I mean, you know, there's a ton of actors who are nerds, and I think, you know, it was Simon Pegg put it best that like being a nerd just means living your passions and and not like apologizing for them. Like I'm so glad that I am who I am, and I'm going to be passionate about what I love, and I think that's sort of become a big thing now. I think I'll, you're right because I grew up. I played sports with all the jocks, but I sort of had to hide part of my nerdiness. And I think now with the explosion of like Marvel and comic book movies, you're more so than ever. I think you're starting to see people who are like, oh, hey, by the way, I may have played basketball uh, or football, but I was totally reading comic books as a kid. And now they can sort of let that out because like it's fine. No, absolutely. And then I, I've, I've said this on my podcast a couple of times. I don't care what you love. I just want you to love more of it. Yeah. Dude, that's so fucking good. Just love more <laughs> of it. You know what? I love whiskey and I'm going to love the hell out of more whiskey. <laughs> I love deadlifting. I'm going to love the hell out of deadlifting until my hips yell at me again. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I'm going to love video. Like I, I love video games. Like when this episode goes up, E3 will have already happened and I need to get off my ass and write that article this week um <laughs> but you know like i'm excited for video games the only thing i'm not excited for is that now it's all like oh well virtual reality i guess that's sort of where we're going next is vr and i just i i don't know until until i have an experience that changes my mind you know i'm not i'm not hyped on it because as of right now the xbox one and playstation 4 have done nothing but remaster games. Where, wh- why? Where are the new games? Where's the new stuff that blows me away? Why, why is it all remasters? No, I, I would agree. And, and I was actually having a conversation with somebody about this this past weekend at Phoenix Comic Con. Is original content is so rare these days. You've got Hollywood that's only intent on making uh, sequels, remakes, or reboots. Mm-hmm. or already proven properties. Um, I'm trying to think of like Ghostbusters will have just come out. Yeah, National um, Lampoons was redone or updated and made for like a new generation with making the kids the part of the story now. Um, yeah. And and I, I mean, I don't even own an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4. So I'm keeping with my my 360 and my PS3. The only reason I want to get a Wii U is for Mario Kart 8. Yeah, it's it's the it's the only reason I'm looking at buying it, it, thinking about getting it. Well, I, like, my reason for not buying a Wii U is <laughs> one, my wife would kill me, um, <laughs> but two, like, I, okay, I want the old games, but I don't want to play them on a Wii U pad. We have a 64. I want to play stuff on a 64 controller. If I want to play a Nintendo game, I want to play it on the, like, I want the old consoles. You know, it, it, and maybe that's because every generation is very nostalgic. And I like that Nintendo allows you to play those old games, but I don't know, man. Like, I, that, that, that's the only reason I haven't done that. Cause I'm like, I know I'm going to buy a Super Nintendo one day. I'm just, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, I, I actually just, I just sold, or I, not just, but a couple of years ago, I sold my Nintendo and Super Nintendo because I had 
any game I wanted to play, I could play on my Wii U, and I was trying to eliminate clutter. Yeah. And unfortunately, at that time, I didn't have any games that I had some sort of emotional attachment to. Uh, in in hindsight, I mean, I kind of wish I would have kept the Nintendo and the old game Yoshi, oh. which was like a Tetris type game. Yeah. Because that I have some very fond memories playing with my family. But other than that, I first started forming real kind of, it's going to sound weird, but like emotional memories to my Nintendo 64. And I still have my Nintendo 64. Yeah. Uh, it, it's still it's still to this day uh, it has the games that like who doesn't want gold if you're gonna redo a game just give give us Goldeneye you don't need to do anything else to it yeah just we want we want like Goldeneye like a, a friend of mine had a great idea um, so there were some art there were some bars out there that also operate as arcades and they have old arcade machines well he was like what if we had one called the console and you could come in and play like. Super Nintendo, Nintendo, or 64 games. And, like, you could sit at your table and drink, but play Goldeneye. See, I was... When I... The first barcade I ever discovered was in... I was in Florida for a Tough Mudder. (laughs) And then we went to Harry Potter World, which was amazing. But we went to this barcade, and it was... There was a $5 cover, but any arcade machine was free. So, A, I finally got to beat the Simpsons arcade machine and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade machine, which, so I was like, bucket listed. Um, All without spending your life savings. Yes. But if you had a tab open at the bar, you could get any previously uh, previous gen system for free. Like you could just play it for free. So they had, you would go up, you'd show them your tab at the bar. They would give you either like a Nintendo cartridge or a Super Nintendo cartridge or a 64 or a Genesis, any of those, um, because they had every single game ever released on the cartridge as an emulator. See, legally, that's the only reason like we were like, yeah, how do you get by with like using it? Because an emulator is how you would be able to do it. But how, like, how do you leave? That was, that was our one, our one thing that sort of tripped us up on like actually doing it. And you know, I don't know, which is weird because by day I'm a lawyer. <laughs> um, but it honestly, you got to look at it as what I'm thinking. Yes, maybe they're not doing like, maybe they didn't pay for all the rights for all these games, but A, you would have to look to see if any of these games that have entered the public domain. True. Or um, they're technically not making money off the video games. They're making money off of the booze, which is why they're able to do it. Aha. There you go. Ah. So if anyone's out there who wants to start up an arcade, that was not legal advice. (laughs) So what kind of, what kind of, what, I'm assuming, obviously you went to law school. Uh, what, is, are you still practicing law now or are you like a full-time podcaster sort of? Uh, no, I am, I am, I am lawyer by day. I, I work for the government or uh, nonprofits is another way to say that, I guess. Um, I've got uh I don't want, um, you don't the lawyers, into, I'm just, I'm just, I yeah. mean, I'm just, you know, I, you are a podcaster. You don't have to go into it, but I mean, you, you practice law, the end no. done. Yes. Um, <laughs> I just moved from, I just moved to California a little while ago. And so in Arizona, I did family law for the state of Arizona. Yeah. I no longer do family law for the state of Arizona because I now live in California. <laughs> Which makes sense. Um, oh man, you know, I, I, not that you would want to, but actually, this is a weird question. Are there like law podcasts where like there's like le- like people discussing like the le- I There has to be, right? Uh, I'm sure there are. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not when you're when you're inundated with it for eight hours a day, forty hours a week. 
it's not something I want to listen to. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I just I just recently got into audiobooks, <laughs> and I was listening to an audiobook by Jeffrey Tubin called The Nine, and it was all about the the Supreme Court and the the, the current justices we have, um, except it included Scalia because it was written when he was alive. And and I was just getting so angry because <laughs> they were just – yeah. And then I listened to another audio book. Uh, it was John Grisham's first first attempt at nonfiction. Yeah. And it was called The Innocent Man. And it was pretty much just about this small town in Alabama and how they royally just framed these two guys um, for murder – and they, they were in – one of these guys was in prison for like 15 years and then finally got exonerated. And just I'm driving down to uh, Arizona listening to this audio book and there are times in my car I'm just shouting. Like in my car I'm like, that's illegal. <laughs> um, and I was just – oh gosh. I was just getting so, so mad. Um but isn't, so yeah, isn't that isn't that like awesome when an artist like can write a book that or, you know gets you impassioned or or a uh, movie or a film like there there aren't I, I feel like there's a lot of media that in ways sort of leaves me not feeling you know like and I love I just I I love those those books or, or movies that do that and and it's kind of similar to what I said earlier it's like I don't care what it makes me feel i just want it to make me feel something yeah technically that's not true because <laughs> batman vs superman made me feel bored uh okay <laughs> let's 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 get into some nerd talk on that all right let's let's <laughs> let's do it uh i liked batfleck uh he he's been i think the best combination batman and bruce wayne yeah uh, Keaton, I thought was a great Bruce Wayne, meh Batman. Christian Bale, great Batman, meh Bruce Wayne. Well, it, it, it felt like more of the character was him being Batman than I mean, minus the whole like you know journey in the first part until he becomes Batman. Like most of the movies were were not really about Bruce Wayne. Like it was really just the Batman. Like he didn't spend a lot of time as as Bruce. Yeah. So I don't think he had a, a big chance to really explore that because even when you're training with Ra's al Ghul, like you're kind of having to sort of be Batman just without the mask. Yeah. Um, I, but I, that's a good, I, I like that. I like the the way that, that you put that. Um, I wasn't a fan only because Jesse Eisenberg is awful. He's awful. It's just. As Lex Luthor. Or are you just saying he's awful in general? I, in general, I do not Ooh. enjoy anything he does as an actor. It's all the same. No, no, not as bad as like Shia LaBeouf in Transformers, where it's all one line delivered <laughs> the same way. <laughs> um, but I, I just I don't like him. I don't like him as an actor. Like even even in the Social Network, I was like, <sighs> I just I don't get it. And the only reason I liked Zombieland was, well, one, you have Bill Murray and fucking Woody Harrelson, but it, the squid and the whale was the first thing he did. And I was like, all right, this, it was an independent film with him and uh, Jeff Daniels. Um, and I was like, all right, okay, indie film, weird sort of emo-ish, awkward kid. And then it just never changed. I like to call him Michael Sorta because he's sort of like Michael Sarah, but he's not as cool. I, I actually would... Very similar to that. I would call him the poor man's Michael Sarah. Because <laughs> I always thought whenever you're watching a movie with Jesse Eisenberg, you're like, I bet they couldn't afford Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if people now think the, the opposite because, you know, after the social network, it's like, oh, Michael Sarah's in a movie. I bet they couldn't afford Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Something about Michael Sarah. I would just rather see him on screen than. Uh, than Eisenberg, but uh, what your thoughts on 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 Batman versus Superman? It was an amazing fifteen minute trailer for the Wonder Woman movie. <laughs> <laughs> I it's 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 was not like I just don't think it was good. 
I think they tried to do too much too fast. You, they're trying to play catch up with Marvel. They're not keeping it in line with the TV universe. Which, okay, you could argue because they brought in multiverses in their in DC's television shows that this could be a different TV. This could be a different um, universe. Yeah. But then you're losing all the... Unless you're planning something phenomenal in five years where you've got like... Two Supermen on screen, two or three Flashes, and you're doing something huge, like the Crisis on Infinite Earths, then I just, I I think they're screwing over a lot of their fans, and like I said, they're trying to play catch up with Marvel, and they don't really know how to do it. What do you think they could have, like, what's one thing you think they could have done to make it, like... To make it better, and and but because I, I I often wonder this about Marvel: Are they doing too much? Because you're setting up for the Infinity Gauntlet, and are you going to bring all of those heroes on screen at one time? Like it worked for for Civil War, and I mean, like it. J- I, I don't know. Like, I, honestly, my, my biggest fear is this. Since Batman and Robin, I'm like, we can't have too many superheroes, guys. We can't do it. Don't yeah. clutter the screen. By the way, that movie doesn't exist in my brain. Well, you know, it doesn't in, in, my, in my mind either. Yeah. Uh, well, here's 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 what you gotta you gotta take a look at. The original Avengers intro, or Phase One of Marvel introduced us to all these heroes individually. Right. So we got that character development. We knew them, and then that way, when you have to put them all on screen together. You already have the background. Yeah. I was watching Batman vs Superman. It's like you. Would, I would hear people next to me going, well, "Wait, who's that? Wait, who's that?" Whereas Civil War, at every character was already introduced, minus Spider Man, except for minus Spider Man. You know, ten minutes or so. Yeah, and Black Panther. But even with introducing those two characters, they still got mini arcs Mm -hmm. and mini intro stories. We also didn't need another intro story for Spider-Man at all. Everybody knows. Bit by a spider, Uncle Ben's dead. Great power, great responsibility. Well, but but I think the only difference in this one is they want, they, they, because they've updated the story. It's not a radioactive spider anymore. It's a genetically altered. And now, haven't they updated it again? Am I that far behind that now? I thought they, because in the movie, he says that he built the web. The web wasn't like shot out of him. Like he constructed it. Okay. The original Spider-Man comics, Peter Parker created the web shooters. Right. The Sam Raimi trilogy with Tobey Maguire, uh, they changed it to biological web shooters. I want to say the then in The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, it was – they also had biological web shooters just because it was easier to explain than how did this kid create this really amazing substance. Yeah. So with this, with Civil War, they're actually going back to the original comic book canon. Um, And I don't remember if they said it was genetic or radioactive. Either way, it, I'm sure it, that's a minute detail. Honestly, I don't, I don't think they said in the, I don't think they said in the movie, but I thought they, I know that they had updated it in the comics. Uh, a few years ago, that instead of radioactive, it was now like you know, uh, uh, biologically, you know, DNA spliced, sort of, yeah, um, you know, and, genetically modified. And I just like I went into Civil War knowing nothing about Black Panther. I had, I had never read one of his comic books. I had never been exposed to him before, and I I 
felt like I got who he was. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of figured it out. I didn't need an entire origin story. Now, what I think, uh, Batman vs Superman, Yawn of Justice, um, where they went wrong is during one of the flashback scenes, they're hinting that they're doing the flashpoint paradox, which is, I'm actually not too familiar about that, but it makes sense as to why the flash showed up. But, oh, I had something, I was going somewhere, but I can't remember. Oh, first of all, if you're going to call a movie Batman vs Superman, I need an actual fight between the two of them. Like, there wasn't a fight until the last few minutes of the movie, and then it's, oh, your mom's name is Martha, too? Let's be best friends. Yeah, that that was, I was a little like, what? Yeah. And nobody needed Batman's origin story. We knew we it, know, yeah. Like, I would say aside from Spider-Man, Batman's origin story is the most known or second most known origin story of any superhero. Yeah, dude, I, 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 I agree. I agree. Um, I, I felt a little like that was like, like when it started, I was like, oh God, again, really? Really? We know, like, I don't think there's anyone coming to this movie who doesn't know that story. Like, I want to know why he's pissed off. Like it, like, and they went into that. Sure. Fine. But I agree. It, 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 Wonder Woman just sort of appears and they just sort of hint at everyone else. And now they're just going to throw them into the, into the next film. I honestly, I'm a Marvel guy, not much of a DC person only because most of Besides Batman, most of DC's characters are gods. Like, there's, yeah. I don't feel like there's a lot of drama and, and conflict, which is why Marvel sort of always connected with me. Um, and it's just, it's, you, their TV universe is owning TV right now. You've got four really well done TV shows, yeah. you know? And, what what Rowling suffered from was the lack of an editor. Expl- uh, I, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Explain. The last four books... Hold on one second. I need to shut my dog up. That's fine. Whew. Okay. So the last four books, everybody knows, were vastly... Had va- like so many more pages. Phoenix... F- Order of the Phoenix should have been 300 pages less. I, yes. I agree with you on that. But... Like, even, even Deathly Hollows, where they spend, like, 200 pages traveling through the forest, it was pretty much, she wrote them, and the editors were like, no, we need to get this out now, people are going to buy it no matter what. And I just wanted to be like, no, edit this down. All right, so question on that. Do you think that that sort of thought comes from, like, our... <laughs> Uh, our media culture of having movies that fairly move pretty quickly and tell a story. Whereas like Lord of the Rings, he does that. He goes into a lot of detail like George R. R. Martin does where he gives you the whole world. And maybe that's sort of what, like when they're going through the marsh, like you feel like visually and mentally as if you're, you're trudging through the dead marshes. Do you feel that she sort of maybe did that? That's what, why she made them so expansive? no, no. Because at some point it just there was no character or story development. It was just trudging for the sake of trudging. Okay. And you could get that across much more succinctly yeah. than spending, you know, a hundred to two hundred pages on it. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Love the movies. Yeah. Lo- lo- no, I don't love the movies. I'm sorry. I love the books. I've only seen up to the third movie. Uh but I just was like, can we get an editor back in here? <laughs> You're not alone in saying that. My, my wife yeah. said the same thing about uh, uh, Order of the Phoenix. She was like, it just, it felt long. But thinking about it as I read through it, I was like, 
I kind of get the teenage angst. Like she's kind of building, she's making you angsty that you have to read all of this. And like, you kind of, like, I get why, she, if she did it to do that, that's awesome. Sort of like Alanis Moore said, did she really write ironic without there being any irony to make because it ironic? And that's genius. Or did she think that it was actually irony, but it wasn't? That's a good point. <laughs> I, 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 I don't I, I don't know because I'm, I'm I'm still in the process of finishing up uh, the books. I'm, I'm a bad nerd. I was an anti hipster hipster who was like I'm not going to read them because everyone else is reading them. Uh, I, have, I have a buddy who's halfway through book three right now. Yeah. So the, I know I the last two do move very quickly, but it's I don't I I don't know. I I kind of thought that through through uh, Order of the Phoenix. I was like, oh God, you could sit. You need to go read some Hemingway. Just go, just let Ernest should have been your editor here. Uh, there are some grammatical things that I really want to dig into that she does that I don't know if it's like a British way of doing things or maybe I don't understand grammar as well as a writer, uh, which is probably the latter. Um, <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah, but I, I want to I wanna understand why and, and, and when those certain things are okay to use for my own edification. Um, all right, so some fun questions. Let's go into it. Uh, Shoot. Where would you go in a time machine if you could go anywhere? Um, I've answered this question before, but I would say I would go – are we talking just time machine yep. or like TARDIS? Time machine. Time machine, okay. I would go like so far into the future right before the Earth explodes. Or the sun destroys the earth. Okay. So, like, what? That's going to happen in five billion years? Four billion years. All right. Okay. I like it. I like it. You're in the finals for the International Air Guitar Championships. What song do you play to take home the crown? Oh, gosh. Ooh. Um, you know, part of me wants to go with Don't Stop Believing because Hello Classic. Yeah. But instead, I think I'm going to say Starship, we built this city. I like it. I like it. That's that's just a, like Don't Stop would get the crowd. But I, I think we built this city would. Uh, that's that's all right. I like it. Um, if you could write a note to your younger self, what would you say in only two words? Start now. That is the quickest anyone's ever answered that question. That's like <laughs> that, that, most like most everyone's like, oh, man, I got three. I got three. I, got, I, I, I can do three. And then it takes them a second. And they they finally <laughs> find the word uh, to make it to. Um, all right. So favorite video game of all time. Oh, gosh. Um, anything Mario. I'm going to lean towards Super Mario 64. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Why not? I, I, it, I also just rebeat it last month. Yeah. So, that, there you go. Uh, all right. What one comic book character or comic book that hasn't been made into a film or TV show would you like to see get their chance to star? Ooh, I don't know. I was, I was when you said what comic book, I was like Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man. Uh, but he's he's had enough. Although I am really excited for Tom Holland. Oh, I am too. I am too. Real quick, getting what we said about Batfleck. I thought Tom Holland was the best Peter Parker Spider-Man. Like, Tobey Maguire was a great Peter Parker, meh, Spider-Man. I thought Andrew Garfield was a really good Spider-Man, meh, Peter Parker. I thought Tom Holland was just nailed everything. Yeah. Um, comic book, or, you know what? I'm going to say Saga. If anyone has read Saga, it's done by Image Comics, and it's this amazing sci-fi story. It's in a very adult comic. There is nudity and cursing and adult themes and violence. But everyone check that out. Saga. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. Uh, I've, I've not read Saga, so I'm, oh. I'll put it on my list of, uh, of things to, to check out. It, it's awesome. Uh, there's these two warring worlds and essentially these two, Two star-crossed lovers meet and end up having a baby, and now both sides are trying to find them and kill them. Yeah, because 
if they got together, it's like this symbol of peace. But you also start to figure out that there's a bigger bad that's controlling the war. So it's I haven't gotten anywhere near like I have no idea who's controlling the war or what the backstory of the war is, but they're getting into it slowly. Phenomenal comic book, amazing writing. All right, I'm I, I'm intrigued now. I, I I still haven't pulled the trigger on Marvel Unlimited, even though it's ten bucks a month. I haven't done it yet. Uh, it, this is Image. It's not going to be on Marvel. No, no, no. I I, I know. Okay. Um. So I'm I'm still I'm a little behind in the comic game. I'm trying to oh me too back up. Um, me too. I my thing is I'm a completionist, and so starting you wanna wait, in you want to yeah. wait until it's all out. Yeah. 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 I got you. I got you. Um. All right. So let's get into a little bit a little bit of fitness. So what? When did you find your passion for 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 fitness, and and how did your nerdy side help you stay in the gym? Uh, you know, and, and kick more ass. Well, um, I'd always tried to be fit, but I never stuck with it. I'd go to the gym like for a month at a time, starting high school, college, and then in in law school, I went through a really bad breakup. And while there are so many people in Washington D.C., which is where I went to law school. I, it was a very small community, so I knew I was going to see this girl again. And I was like 120 pounds, very skinny, very scrawny, like stereotypical Peter Parker before the transformation. Yeah. Right? And so I was like, you know what? Next time I see her, I'm going to be fucking ripped. So a week after I had made that decision, I started working with a guy who uh, went to military school. And so I was like, hey, dude, can I go work out with you? And he 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 thought I wasn't going to keep with it. So he created the hardest workouts he had ever done Mm -hmm. through all of his military training just so I would quit. And since I didn't know any better, I didn't know these were really hard workouts. (laughs) I was just like, oh, this is normal. And so I just kept showing up. Um, and it's just like, I just got addicted to that feeling, that soreness, uh, that pump in, in like six months, I gained 40 pounds of lean muscle. Damn dude. Yeah. Um, and then when I saw her again, I was ripped, (laughs) um, when I saw the girl again, but that's kind of what I what I noticed is in mixing nerd and fitness culture is this guy was I was thinking stereotypical jock. And then one day we went back to his place and he had like Stargate DVDs and Star Wars Expanded Universe books. And he was a huge Firefly fan. So then it, we just started talking sci fi and Star Wars and, and you know, and Firefly. And then in between sets at the gym, we would talk about those things. And that's kind of where the nerd and fitness passion combination was born. I, I love that, that uh, you're like, oh, this is just normal, right? Like I just, it's normal. Yeah. Cool. I'll just, yeah. this is what everyone does. Um, but, but I like that you said you, you just kept going, you kept pushing, you kept going. And I think a lot of people sort of uh, you know, it's like trudging through those 200 pages of, uh, J.K. Rowling. <laughs> you just got to keep, you got to keep rolling. You just got to keep rolling. Uh, and I think too many people give up too, too soon. Um, but man, I, you, you've like, I, I, I love talking to people like you and I who, who have this passion with comic books and, and, and find that they can get in the gym and they can live that sort of hero's life on their own. Um, you know, whether it's having the balls to create a podcast or start a business or, uh, you know, lift a, a 200 pound barbell off your chest, uh, cause we all start like Captain America started a weakling, you know, yeah. uh, not everyone is born like Thor, but you know. <laughs> well, Chris Hemsworth was born he, like Thor. He actually, if you look back at his, when he first started modeling, he was, I mean, he was. He was muscular, but he wasn't like as huge as he is well, now. But if you if you talk to like Chris Evans about it when they were training for the Avengers, yeah. he was like, Hemsworth could just 
like he would just pack on the muscle naturally. Yeah. Whereas um, Evans had to like work out and like count his macros and make sure he was following this really strict diet. And it was a lot harder on him than Hemsworth. Yeah. Because Hemsworth was just like, he's in the gym for a week and then doubles his max bench. <laughs> but I, I, I don't want people to get intimidated because, okay, if you're worried about starting an hour podcast, start 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, one of my best podcasts I just released was 10 minutes long. And that's mostly because of my guest and that's all the time they could give me. Which was amazing, and it was still it was still great. Um, and we we can talk more about that later because he's actually echoing some of the sentiments we're talking about now. But if you can't lift a hundred pound dumb or barbell, do forty five pounds, do thirty pounds. You know, you've got to be able to lift thirty pounds before you can lift one hundred and twenty pounds. Yep. You've got to lift one hundred and twenty before you can lift you know two hundred. Yep. And it's just start where you are, and try to take one step forward every day. Yep. And, I, and, I, I agree. Yeah. And do your best every day. Like, and that doesn't mean if at one point you benched 160, that the next day you need to bench 160. For whatever reason, maybe your best that day is 145 or 140. You know, Whatever your best is that day, do your best. Yeah. That is that is that is a tough lesson I've had to learn, especially when it comes to deadlifts. Um, I'm like, no, it's going to be 385 the day. It's going to be, th- oh, God, why does 225 feel like a fucking elephant? Uh, yeah. Uh, like, it, it, some days your body says yes, some days it doesn't. And you have to, yep, you, you got to listen. You got to listen to your body. Um and like, I mean, I've, I've fluctuated over the past five years up and down and they're like, right now I'm pretty much stuck at benching 135, which is, might sound like a lot, but it's not what I've done in the past. I've been some, you know, up to 160, 165, 180s. Uh, and I'm just, I'm naturally small. So that's, that's actually a lot for me. But because I'll get up to my 160s and then for whatever reason, I'll take like a month vacation from the gym. And then when I go back, I'm like, oh, I can't lift 160 anymore. (laughs) And that's complete, like, that's my thing and I'll own it. And I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. Like me and my wife took a vacation for, for a month right after I moved to California before we both started new jobs. And like, we were traveling, we were visiting friends and family and eating. And I made the conscious decision not to work out every day. You know, I went once or twice a week and I was drinking, you know, a lot because that's where it's what you do when you travel. Yeah. Um, but I owned it and I didn't let myself feel bad for it. And I don't want like, if anyone out there is struggling with getting back to the gym or starting a new routine or something like that, don't let your week off or your month off make you feel bad because you did something that you wanted to do that was fun during that that week or that month or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yep. Life life isn't all about barbells and, uh, you know, hitting the gym and hitting your macros. I mean, there are times when you have goals. I have a goal right now. I got a photo shoot. In a week and a half, dude, I'm I'm dialed in. I'm I'm on I'm on target. I'm like Hawkeye right now with every single day. <laughs> nice. Um, but you know, after that, you can relax a little bit. But you know, be proud of the work you've done, and you know you've taken the steps. You know how to get back to that point if that's where you if that's where you want to be. But it's it's finding that balance, and I think that's a tough thing for a lot of people who are new because you take a week or two off, you go on vacation, you're like, oh God, you know what? Well, it's done. I've done the damage. I guess I can't get it back. No, get back in there. Keep doing what you've been doing. Yeah. You've, you, you learned how to ride a bike when you were seven. When was the last time you got on a bike? 10 years ago, I guarantee you in about five minutes, you're going to know how to ride that bike just like you did when you were seven. Absolutely. So, all right. Last, last question. So as a podcast host, I got to know who, 
Who's the one guest that you want to get on? So when you get them on, I will, oh. I will direct you back to this episode. Oh, the one guest I want to get on. I have so many dream guests. I would love, honestly, the one, the one guy that made me, uh, made me, that got me into podcasting, made me want to become a podcaster, uh, was Chris Hardwick, uh, from Nerdist. He's just built, he was like, the, like whenever you think about podcasts, I don't know anyone who doesn't think about Chris Hardwick and the Nerdist network. Yeah. And I just think that's huge. Um, on more of a fit side, like if I could, oh, if I could just sit down for like five, 10 minutes and talk with Dwayne Johnson, man, <laughs> just the rock, man. He's, he's, he's so cool and funny and just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, dude, I, I would sneak on his plane and like dress yeah. like, you know, uh, he's, you know, I, it's interesting. You, you talk about someone who, who failed. He was on the brink of being out of the WWF. Like no, oh, one, yeah. no one liked him as his original character. And then the rock just kind of came and he went with it. And that's like, that's the persona that, that made him made his career, you know? And he, yeah. he was at the brink of like being, he was, he was almost done. No one cared that he was, who his father was or, or it, he wasn't well, exciting. Yeah. He has a production company called $7 productions yeah. because right before he made it, he had $7 in his pocket and that was it. That's all he had to his name. Sleeping in his car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's awesome. Yeah. Like I, I love the rock. Yeah. He's, he's, he's badass. All right, so Kenneth, I've had an awesome time chatting. You have a great show. Uh, again, you can find it on iTunes. If it's not on iTunes, is there anywhere else they can find? We we are on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We are on Google Play Podcasts. We are, you can find us usually on any aggregator, any podcast aggregator. Yeah. But, Yeah. It's find us, contact me, shoot me an email, anything. If they want to email you, where can they find you via email? Where can they find you on social? If they want to, if they want to interact with dumbbells and dragons. Okay. Um, email is Ken at dumbbells and dragons.com. That's one of the, also the, one of the best ways to find the podcast is at is dumbbells and dragons.com. All social media is at dumbbells dragon. And that's, that's all social media, Snapchat, Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, the, the one that hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> he's already on it, guys. He's, yeah. he's ahead of the game. But so, yeah, that's where that's where everyone can find uh, find me. And we also blog. We have we usually release two or three different blog entries on various topics every week. Right now we're doing a lot of Game of Thrones recaps. Yeah. So go check those out. Uh, hey. Go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I'm I still on cloud nine. So this past weekend was Phoenix Comic Con and we were talking about the DC TV universe. Um, one of my latest podcasts that went up uh, Saturday, I managed to speak with David Ramsey, who plays John Diggle on Arrow. Nice. Uh, he was so nice and managed to give me 10 minutes of his time and is just the nicest, most well-spoken guy. And we talk like he loves, he loves the Marvel and DC universes. And we talk a little bit about those things. We talk a little bit about fitness. Um, so go definitely check out that, that episode. Is he a, is he a pretty, is he a, I'm assuming he's a pretty fit guy. I actually have I have to admit like I know the name but I actually am very behind on TV because we don't have cable. <laughs> it's fine. He is he's you know Stephen Amell plays Arrow. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. he's a secondly essentially the second on the call sheet. He's he's uh Stephen Amell's started out as uh, Oliver Queen's bodyguard on the show and now he also plays a uh, character called Spartan. Yeah. So he was just the nicest guy. 
Yeah. And, and he had a lot of really good advice, uh, fitness advice, acting advice for people out there listening. So if I can get everyone over to that, um, that episode, that was a really good episode. And it was only 10 minutes long. Yeah. I will uh, have the links for all this as well in the show notes, sidequestfitness.com forward slash, because my dumbass has been saying backslash for the last 90 some episodes, forward <laughs> slash dumbbells hyphen dragons. Uh, and you can find all those show notes there uh, and get the links to that episode as well as Facebook, Twitter. I'll be even put up Snapchat, uh, which I got to connect with you on Snapchat, by the way. Uh, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. It's basically think of it as like a video documentary of your day. Like that's sort okay. of like, it's like, that's why it's called your story. Like you can document your day. Um, but uh, yeah, which, which is cool. Uh, I'm, I'm messing with it more and more uh, as well. Um, but guys, he has an amazing show. So head over to iTunes, check out Dumbbells and Dragons. Uh, he, like I said, he's about probably by now when this airs 20 episodes in, they're around an hour. Some are less, some are a little more, but that's cool. Check them out, download them. He's got tons of guests, uh, again, outside of fitness as well that are in the nerd and geek universe. Uh, and I think he's only, he's only going to grow, but I want to know, are you going to be in any comic cons that people can find you and say, Hey, in the next few months. Yes. Uh, I will. I am going to be at San Diego comic con. I may only be there for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually make it there Wednesday night and Thursday. I'm going to be at Leviosa, which is a Harry Potter convention in Vegas. And then I'm going to be at NerdCon. In August, I think that's in God, L.A. or Palm Springs. And then I'm also going to be at Palm Springs Comic Con in November. And if I can make it happen, I'm also going to be at Phoenix Fan Fest in October. Awesome. Uh, guys, head out to any of those locations. Keep an eye on Twitter, Facebook as well. And then you can go out and meet Kenneth and say, hey, I love your show. I love the show that you are on with Robbie at SciQuest as well. Uh, and I'm going to throw this out there. You get the chance to come to Dragon Con in Atlanta. I'll come down to Atlanta and hang out with you. Oh, nice. I will make that. When, when is Dragon Con usually? Uh, that's a very good question. I think it's usually, I think it's in the fall. Usually. Yeah. Um, I have we'll Google. Google. <laughs> we'll Google it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll totally drive the hour and a half and come down there. So, Kenneth, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I look forward to even more awesome episodes from you and the amazing guests that you've had on. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, you're very welcome, Robbie. Thanks for having me. Step up and you gotta get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you gotta check it and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fierce. Got a low key bamf right here. You wanna meet them, there's no better way to greet them than to strike a boss pose. Take a look into the mirror.